First of all, before I launch into this video, I think I need to present an apology here. Because when I made my video yesterday about preppers, I thought mistakenly that I knew what the term stood for. But apparently the word prepper encompasses a spectrum of behavior that is far wider than what I used in my video. So first of all, I would like to urge you that if you're going to listen to my previous video, keep in mind that I had in my mind this narrow definition of what a prepper is. Now, as I've come to understand now, the word prepper is much wider than I thought. And it also includes such behavior as, for example, somebody in Kansas building a tornado shelter or somebody in a floodplain building flood proofing for their house, for example, or simply making sure that you've got a larder full of food for the odd rainy day, if, you know, food can sometimes be short, so that you have something to fall back on, even having something in the freezer, in case you yourself have a financial crisis on your hands and you need to fall back on what you've got stockpiled in the house in order to make ends meet. All of these things apparently fall under the banner of what people call preppers. And I very narrowly focused on just those people who are obsessed with literally global cataclysm. Now I did use the word cataclysm in my video, so I thought that was pretty clear. But because the word prepper itself can span such a wide spectrum of behavior, it wasn't clear. And for that, I do need to apologize. So remember now that when I'm talking about prepper, I'm talking specifically about that part of the spectrum of people who think that they can somehow prepare for cataclysm, for disasters that far outweigh anything that you can reasonably expect to happen during a human lifetime. You see, if you live in a floodplain, you can expect that your house might flood one day. If you live in Kansas, you have to realize that you might be faced with a tornado one day. If you live on the slope of a volcano, obviously you need to realize that one day you may have to face an eruption of the volcano. And are you prepared for that? If you're that sort of a prepper, I respect what you're doing and I have absolutely no issue with what you're doing. But if you are the sort of prepper who thinks that this year will be the end of the world as we know it because of the Mayan calendar finishing, or if you have convinced yourself that Nibiru is on its way and this planet will be rocked by mega quakes of magnitude 10 or higher, or if you have convinced yourself that sometime in the next couple of years we will experience the sort of meteor impact that is comparable to the Yucatan Peninsula one that wiped out the dinosaurs, then, and then only, I'm going to sit here and laugh at you. Because the chances of such a thing happening are so slim that you can practically ignore them. And not only that, it is actually impossible to prepare yourself for such a calamitous event of that scale. You cannot survive a nuclear winter. Not in the sort of sense that you would delude yourself into thinking you could by stockpiling years worth of food. You will not come out the other end, even if you do survive the event, you will not come out the other end being able to pick up the pieces and reconstruct your life in any meaningful way. So that is the sort of delusion that I was hinting at and that I'm laughing at. It is preposterous. But what's even more important is that we need to realize 
what sort of attitude is actually embraced when you become that kind of a prepper, when you become the sort of prepper who prepares for surviving a global catastrophe, a, a calamity of global proportions, in the hope that you will be one of the few that will survive this event. Now, you might probably think that you're doing the right thing, but I would actually put it to you that not only is this somewhat selfish, but you could argue when survival is at stake, such sort of precious notions go out the window, but also that in actual fact this is untenable. You see, self-sufficiency, for example, is a lofty idea, it's a wonderful idea, and if you achieve it, you can make yourself immune to some of the, you know, outrageous, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune that, for example, a global uh, economic recession would throw at you. Lovely for you, but self-sufficiently, self, sorry, self-sufficiency cannot sustain a global population of 7 billion people. That's impossible. And that is why the notion of prepping for such calamitous events is self-defeating. Imagine you predict that the world economy is going to collapse in the year 2013 and everybody will fall back on having to fend for themselves. Imagine you have convinced yourself that that will happen in 2013. Now you have gone out of your way to prepare for this event, so you've stocked out a lot of food and God knows what else, and you might just possibly survive this event. Now imagine for a moment that everybody did that. I'll tell you what will happen. The food riots that you are predicting for 2013 would not happen possibly in 2013. They would happen with absolute certainty today. Because if everybody wanted to stockpile that much food in order to try and survive a number of years where nothing is available, then everybody would have to try and grab for themselves so much of the few resources that are available that they would very, very quickly run out. So first come are lucky and the rest will starve, not possibly in 2013, but with absolute certainty today, while you are sitting pretty on your stockpile of food, on your medicines, on your armory, and on your house which has turned into a fortress. Now is that really what you want? I would hope not. It would make a lot more sense to look at the problems we are undeniably facing to date and look at how we might, if possible, and of course that is a question, is it possible, but we have to try and look at how we could possibly continue to sustain the current global population into the future. Every man for himself is not the sort of ideology I would like to embrace and definitely not before the worst has happened. Thank you.